Hi, welcome to the 10th episode of the New England Gown Knits podcast. I am Janet and I live in Massachusetts with my husband, our two boys, our cat, and our dog. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram at the New England Gown. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you're a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. I hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to apologize ahead of time. I am recovering from being sick and this is the first day that my voice has sounded remotely normal. Um, it is still kind of cracking like a 13 year old boy's voice. So I do have some water in front of me, a cup of coffee, which isn't going to help with my throat, but I need the caffeine this morning. Um, so I apologize for that. And then on top of that, the lighting's going to be off. So it's an hour earlier than when I normally podcast. On top of that, it is snowing out, so there's not a whole lot of natural light coming in at all. And then on top of that, my boys, my 12-year-old and my 10-year-old, have a two-hour delay from school. So they are home. I shove them outside to go shovel the uh, deck in the walkway. So I'm hoping there won't be a whole lot of distractions um, and noise. If you hear the jingling in the background, that is the dog who's running back and forth because he wants to go out and play with the dog. I'm going with it. I am going with the flow. Whatever happens, happens. So hopefully this will all work out okay. So, and I have a lot to share, so I didn't want to put off podcasting. So I'm going to start with my finished objects. So the first finished object, I guess, is the elephant in the room. I have finished my Jveg sweater. This is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter. Um, and I knit this out of the Felici Bear, um, which is a 75-25 blend. And this is yarn I dyed myself. So the main body of the color, I dyed this green. And then for the lace and color work, I dyed up this gold color with blue and red speckles. And I am extremely pleased at how this turned out. I have to say, when I had finished it and tried it on before blocking, I was really nervous. I had finished the body and tried it on, and it was rather tight and short. And I kept saying to myself, my swatch was okay. It's super wash. It's going to stretch. Um, but I was extremely nervous on how it was going to turn out. And blocking is a miracle. It fits perfectly. I'm going to try and stand up here. So it fits very well. Just a little bit loose in the body. And it's the perfect length for me. Um, so I'm very pleased with the way this turned out. I love the way the yoke fits. I love the sleeves. It is funny though, because I did, I have talked about this before, that I do have monkey arms. So I added an extra two, lay, uh, two inches to the sleeve. So I added an, an extra inch in the um, X pattern, and then an extra inch in the ribbing. And I'm, I'm very glad I did, because it fits exactly where I like to have my sleeves. Um, I do have to say, the cabling um, did get a little bit tedious after a while. I was using a cable needle to do the X's. I think if I could have figured out how to do it properly doing twisted stitches, it would have gone much better, or at least maybe quicker. Unfortunately, every time I tried that, the X didn't look just right. So. I ended up with the cable needle, so I found it very tedious after a while, but I am so glad I stuck through and did it because I absolutely love the way it came out. I did mess up on a couple of the X's, but honestly, nobody's going to notice if they're looking that closely at the sweater. That's their problem, not mine. So my second finished object I will share and my son will be thrilled there was a two hour delay because I told him he couldn't have these until after I podcast so now he'll get them so he can wear them to school. So these are the vanilla Ravenclaw socks that I knit for my younger son Ryan and here's the second one. So this is knit out of Snally Gaster Fibers in her Ravenclaw colorway, and it's the Polaris base, which is a 75-25 blend. 
And here it is, all caked up. So, not too bad. These were going to, I wanted to knit socks for both the boys for Christmas, and I had started knitting Hufflepuff colored socks for my youngest when he decided to retake the sorting test and was sorted into Ravenclaw. So these were kind of a week before Christmas ordering the yarn. So have these done and he will be happy that he can wear them to school today. And then for my final work in pro, uh, not work in progress, for my final finished object, I have the Clark socks. And these are by Jacqueline Salem of the Knit Folk podcast. I love the way these came out. Um, let me show you them off the block. You can see the cables a little bit better here. And then there's a cable going down the back. What I will say that I will do di differently next time I knit them. So I did eight repeats for the leg. Um, had I tried it on before I decided to do the heel, I would have done 10. So next time I'll do 10 repeats because I like to have my leg a little bit longer. And these were knit out of a homespun house yarn in her gold Stellina fingering weight. And this is the Half Blood Prince. And I wish, and the camera's not going to pick it up, but I wish you could see the Stellina. It's, it sparkles. It twinkles. Um, I tried these on and it just looks absolutely beautiful. So what I'm going to do is these are going to go into my box of socks. So I did pick up a box and I meant to bring it over and I didn't. I'll grab it in a little bit to show you. So, um, I ended up knitting two pairs of socks in January. I finished my Christmas Eve cast on and then I finished these in January. So these are going to go in my box and box of socks. I'm going to try and do two socks a month and one I'll put into my regular rotation and one I plan on putting into my box of socks. We'll see how I, it goes. I think two socks a month can be overly ambitious, but I was quite pleased between the sweater and the two socks and I knit a hat in January. I think I did pretty good. That, that's because I have no life. Um, I think I did pretty good with my knitting and my finished objects um, for this month. So let me move on to my works in progress. And my first work in progress I have housed in my Tanny Casey bag. Um, I adore her bags and I'm going to share in my um, acquisitions um, something else I purchased that I absolutely love from her. But housed in this is my exploration station, and let me just show you. And this, of course, is by the by the magnificent Stephen West. His designs are just stunning and innovative and so original. So let me show you what I have done. So I am still, let me see, here we go, that's the front. This, I'm still on the short rows section, and... I am really enjoying this. I did start this, not this past weekend, but the weekend before, just because I was getting sick of the X pattern on the sleeves of my Schweig. Um, so I started this, and then I decided I really wanted to finish the Schweig, so I put this down. But this is um, a couple hours of knitting, which isn't too bad. I've got one more wedge after the one I'm working on before I can go to the brioche and I am looking forward to br brioche. The first brioche I did was in the Half Moon Oracle Shawl and I loved it and I've been missing it so I can't wait to start on that but let me show you what I'm knitting this out of. So I am knitting this out of, this is I Am No Bird is the colorway, and this is Woolen Vine Yarns, and this is in her Blitz space. I don't know, the sparkle, this is incredible. The sparkle in this, it's a gold Selena, 
and here it is. So it is 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% gold stellina. And I, I love this. I love her yarn. The dyeing on her yarn is impeccable. So I have bought this last February and I've been holding off on using it until I found a special project and I'm so glad I held off because I'm loving every minute of knitting this project and I can't wait to have it done. So the second color I am using is, this is Jagger Spun in their um, Heather base and this is the color Slate. And here is, and it's just 100% wool, it doesn't specify what type of wool it is. And then I'm also using their Wisteria color. I love this. It's a beautiful lilac -y mauve. Um, it's two ply. It has a beautiful, well, it's heathered, so it has a beautiful heathered effect between the mauve and the lavender. And then the last color I am using is, this is um, by Plymouth Yarn, and this is Saki. And this is a, let me, here we go, and here is the tag, and it's, I believe it's, yeah, 40% superwash merino, 40% kid mohair, and 20% nylon. And I do have to say, when I first started knitting this, I was a little worried because the Jagger Spun is a little bit more rustic with it just being 100% wool and not merino. Um, and it has, I don't know if I hold it like this, if you can see there's a halo to it. And I wasn't too sure how well I'd like it playing with the wool and vine yarn. Um, but I absolutely, I love it. The wool and vine, I think with a little bit of sparkle, just gives it this pop that it needs. So now that the Jveg is done, I can go ahead and concentrate on this. So I'm, like I said, I'm really enjoying this and I can't wait because one more wedge and then I get to go on to the brioche, which I am extremely excited about doing again. There is, I believe, increasing with the brioche, so I have to say Stephen West um, did videos for this, um, for each section to show you how to do it. So I will be watching his video on how to do the increases in the brioche section when I get to it, which I think is extremely helpful because, like I said, the wool and vine was the first one I've ever done brioche in, and I was lucky enough that there were no increases in that shawl. So this will be taking it up now that I have the brioche down. This will be taking it up to the next level. So can't wait to get to that point and start working on that. And then for my last work in progress, I just cast this on yesterday. So, let's see here. <laughs> All right. So, and this is being housed in my Fringe Supply company bag in the plaid color. And I do, it's the wax canvas, and I do love this. I've been carrying this around everywhere with me. This is my travel knitting bag. So I am casting on another vanilla sock, and here's what I have, not much so far. So I am knitting it out of leftovers from my Half Moon Oracle shawl. So here, this is by Primrose Yarn Company, and this is her Galaxy colorway, and it's full of purples and highlighter yellow, and I love this yarn, so I'm glad I have enough it won't be a full sock, um, it'll be a little bit shorter of a leg, but I, I'm happy that I'll have enough for a sock because I absolutely adore this color. And then I'm using for heels, toes, and cuffs. This is Anzula um, in their squishy base, and this is the Fiona color. And I unfortunately I don't have the tags, I think I threw them out when I had finished my um, Half Moon Oracle shawl, but so, and now I am knitting these on Addy Turbos, they are 8 inch US ones, 
So I'm going to say US 1. So I started knitting these. So I did the toe magic loop on my Chow Gu ones. And then I normally do 64 stitches on a US 1, 2.25 millimeters. So I started the toe on the one, went up and increased to the 64 stitches and started knitting this and I was actually, I would say, a good a third of the way done the foot. When I looked at it, I'm like, it looks really big. So I put it next to the um, Snally Gaster socks and it literally was almost an extra half of an inch wider than my normal socks. Sorry about the phone ringing. Sorry about that, that was the school calling. I guess the snow's not letting up anytime soon, so school is canceled, so after I finish the podcast, I guess I have to call around and figure out um, who can watch the boys for me while I go off to work. So anyways, I'm not even sure where I left off, but this sock, which was much larger than what my normal socks are on a US one. So I decided to actually read the packaging and I guess Addie's US ones are actually 1.5 millimeters. So I ended up ripping back, knitting the toe up to the increases and I'm only doing 54 stitches for the sock and it, it's much better, um, a lot less wide. I, I like having a lot of negative ease to, ease to my socks so and this is what I have so far so that is it for my works in progress not a whole lot but like I said I did get a lot of finished objects completed so I am glad to get those off the needles and start some new things so I do have quite a bit of acquisitions to share with you. So I went a little bit crazy this week or the last two weeks and actually let me start with um, I guess the first thing is I had put in my Half Moon Oracle shawl into Kristen Lear of the Yarn Chasm podcasts knit along and I have I never win anything ever win anything and I was so lucky that I actually I won her knit along and I was able to choose any colorway from um, that I would like and she was gonna dye it up for me on any of her bases so I decided I wanted the moon cutser on her footsie base her yarn like I said with the I am no bird um, her yarn is just stunning. It is just... She is an amazing dyer. She is extremely talented. It, it's gorgeous. So I had won that and then she had an update that week as well. So it's funny because I tend to order from her in January and February. Her updates are normally Fridays at 7 and I guess during the rest of the year I, I'm never able to catch her updates so I was able to this time around and I ended up picking up Dirty on Purpose and this is also on her footsie base and I, I guess I should say her footsie base is an 80% superwash blue face luster and a 20% nylon and again her dyeing it is just stunning she's just unbelievable so I had, I ordered those, and then um, the next yarn I had ordered, this is from the Earl Grey a Fiber Company, and this is on the Gun Powder Sock Base, and this is a 70% Merino, 20% Yak, and 10% Nylon, and this is in their pre-temp, um, colorway and it's French word for those little cakes and unfortunately I cannot pronounce it to save my life but this is absolutely beautiful they were having a sale and I saw it on Instagram because of course 
as you do. You look at Instagram and you then get uh, hooked into uh, purchasing things on Etsy. But I do, I absolutely love this. And it is soft and squishy. I can't wait to see how it knits up. I've been dying to try a yak blend. So I'm extremely excited to give this a go for socks. And then Michaels was having a sale on all of their yarn and then they were also having 20% off your purchase. So I couldn't help myself. I ended up picking up some yarn for my younger son. I took him with me to pick up some Patton's Croy sock yarn. Ended up being $8 for two balls. So I figured $8 for a pair of socks, especially for kids where they're outgrowing them and they're a little rougher on their socks. I thought it was a great, great deal. So the first one colors I picked up is in their clover colors. And he had picked these out. And then the other color he had picked out was in the gray-brown marl. And there's some red in there as well. So these will be socks for him. And then I decided, I couldn't help myself, I picked myself up some sock yarn as well. So, and this is in the cameo colors. So, those will be knit into socks at some point. Who knows, maybe depending on how quickly I can get through on the one and a half, um, I'll start knitting my son socks on a one and a half, US one and a half size needles. Hopefully I can start flying through those. So then I also wanted to share, so Tanny Casey, who I absolutely love that bag, um, also sells totes. And I saw this tote, and this is in that wax canvas plaid that the fringe supply bags come in. So I purchased this, and it has gorgeous leather handles on it. So I ended up picking this up as my purse and it has a beautiful wax canvas really sturdy brown bottom and then it's it's filled but it has a nice sturdy canvas lining as well absolutely loving that and it fits everything in it perfectly because being a wife and a mother I carry everything around first aid kits I don't wear glasses yet there is um, lens solutions and eye drops in my bag for my husband. I carry it all. Medication, everything, so I need a large bag. <laughs> so this is perfect. And then I also quickly brought over, this is the, from Michael's, the box I picked for my box of socks. So these will house the ones that I will not be wearing right away that I'm going to wait until the new year next year. So, so that is it for the knitting items and as far as what I've been up to the last few weeks obviously almost nothing but knitting. So last this past weekend I was sick so I literally did nothing but sit on the couch and knit. Um, and then the weekend before that we didn't do anything. My oldest son was camping um, with the Boy Scouts and he was at a local farm and they stayed in a barn. Luckily enough it was 50 degrees out so it was fairly warm. Um, and the barn is heated, all the big old barn built in the 1800s. How warm could it actually get um, with the high ceilings and the loft? So, um, but he didn't complain. He loves it. He loves camping. Camping's not for me at the end of the day. I love hiking, I love being outside, but at the end of the day, I want a warm bed, I want heat, I want running water and plumbing. That's just me. Camping is just not my thing. Um, but both, both my boys absolutely love it, which is great. So as for what's coming up Friday, is my birthday, I do have the day off. I normally don't take my birthday off. I don't 
make a big deal out of it. So I'll go out for drinks or dinner with friends and that's about it. You know what, I'm, I'm going to be 41. I'm kind of at that age that birthdays aren't as exciting as they used to be. But I was trying to take time off during a spring vacation with the boys and unfortunately I couldn't get any of that time off. So I had to use up some days and my boss is like, pick a couple days. So I had picked off, picked Martin Luther King Day, which the boys had off. And then I took a couple days in March. Um, that the boys also have off as well. And then I figured my birthday fell on a Friday, so I might as well make a long weekend out of it. And yes, I was born on Groundhog's Day. I don't know whether that's good or bad. I'll let you know if I see my shadow. Hopefully I don't, and spring will come soon. Although the weather, like I said, it's been crazy here. It's been super warm. For New England, we've been in upper 30s and 40s. We did have a big ice storm um, last Tuesday, which caused quite a mess. And I think it hit our, our little, little town of Sutton, Massachusetts, actually hit the news with a school bus sliding down the hill in one of the neighborhoods next to ours. Um, luckily, it wasn't my son's bus, and thank God nobody got hurt and but a little bit too much excitement for our small town and it's funny because I think it happens quite often um it, it froze it was funny my husband left the house at 4 a.m. he travels into Boston every morning so he likes to leave early he said the roads were completely fine there was no ice on the roads at all by 5.30, the streets were frozen and it was an ice skating rink. It was a mess. Uh, but New England, New England weather, it is what it is and nobody got hurt. So that is all good. So anyways, I think that's about all I have to share with you. Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention and I don't have it with me, but um, hopefully I'll have it within a few days and I can share it with you next time. I picked up a sewing pattern. So I used to do a lot of quilting before I had kids. Um, I had my own little craft area with my sewing machine set up and then we were living in New Jersey at the time so I was able to have my own crafting room. When we moved back up to Massachusetts and bought the house, I don't have a crafting area. So when I sew, unfortunately I have to kind of put it on the dining room table and it has to be picked up and put away. So I've stopped sewing for a while, but I think watching um, Kristen Lear and Katie of Inside Number 23 and Gabby from Once Upon a Corgi and all of their sewing in the Hey Sister podcast as well, I decided I wanted to try sewing some of my own clothes. So I did pick up the pattern for the Holly burn skirt. So I'm hoping it comes in Wednesday. It has been shipped. Um, and then this way on Thursday I can hit Joanne Fabrics, um, pick out some material and what I'll need, and hopefully with my day off on Friday get that skirt sewn. Um, so hopefully I'll share that with you and if I have time maybe I'll do a separate video about it. So that that is it. This time I am done. I hope you guys all have a great two weeks ahead and I will talk to you later. Bye!